Hi, my name is June, and these are the mountains where I live. More specifically, I live on the California side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range with my husband and my little dog. Welcome to my channel, where I endeavor to entertain and bring a smile to the faces of my viewers by my sewing shenanigans on the mountain. wanted to make a fresh apron for the baking season. Not that I needed another apron. I've got plenty of aprons, but uh, a few of them have seen some better days and some of them are vintage. And this one, while I did make it from a vintage reproduction pattern, um, it's seen better days. Uh, yeah, it's gotten a lot of wear. So, um, so I decided to make a new one. I've had this harvest print in my stash for years and always intended to make an apron for baking with it. I didn't want to make a half apron because, let's face it, they're a bit impractical and mostly for looks. But first, coffee. Patterns from this period are where you start to see a lot of hostess aprons. A pretty apron to wear when your guests arrive. Now that I'm properly prepared to start my project, I had to see how much yardage I actually had. I originally chose this print for an apron because, well, it's wheat. It's difficult to bake without flour, so it seemed appropriate. Now see, this is what I'm talking about. This is just an apron. And look at that dart. Look. Yeah, and this is a gathering line. Okay. You just don't see details like this in modern aprons. Before I could really get to sewing this apron, I had to do some prepare work like transferring markings and putting in the stay stitching. And this pattern actually called for the darts to be outlined with stay stitching as well. I'm always more at ease this time of year especially when the storms start coming in and California gets some wetter weather. Early fall is always more stressful now because of fire season. So I'm always grateful to see the clouds roll in. My little dog's habits change too. He's often held hostage by blankets this time of year and has me continually reheating his rice pack. This vintage pattern called for bias tape. So I got to work on the patch pockets. And I don't like to have raw edges exposed, um, so I press them and tuck them out of sight, where my stitching is sure to catch them and hide them. These patch pockets had an angle to them, so pressing the corners perfect, I had to be more flexible. If you're one of my subscribers, you've seen me apply patch pockets before, which is a good thing, because applying these patch pockets was like navigating a corn maze with blinders on, so I didn't film it. Instead, I uh, had to have a little visit from the sewing fairy. relief and I think the air smells so nice after a good rain if you're new here then welcome but just to bring you up to speed I have recently acquired this studio that I am in and I'm still setting it up um, and that includes getting decent light 
And while I did order a pendant light off Amazon, it's not a very practical light. Because I'm not very practical, I guess. Anyway, I needed a decent light, as I'd often have to stop sewing once I no longer got the natural light from the window. So, time to get a proper light. Because everyone knows this time of year, it gets darker sooner. And as a content creator, I can't just stop sewing. This little strap here was really the only seam in the project, and I like to finish my seams with serger. As I started to apply the bias tape, I was realizing quite quickly that I didn't have as much as I needed, and I should have gotten more when I went to Joanne's a week ago. But I had failed to bring the pattern envelope with me or even taken a picture of it when I went and underestimated the amount of bias tape it required. And Joann's is a 45 minute to an hour drive away. But when I was at Joann's, I got a little extra black fabric just to have in my stash for when I needed black fabric. Well, I needed that black fabric to make bias tape because I wasn't about to go to town again to get a single package of bias tape, especially at this time of year. Making bias tape involves a lot of pressing, something I am kind of good at, but it's time consuming. So I pressed bias tape. A lot of bias tape. because your girl gets a little confused when I have to calculate things and think outside the box. I made way more than I needed. But after running out, I didn't want to take any chances. This time of year, the sun is low and it shines in my kitchen window. So you know what that means. I love it when he suns himself and when he sets his little nose on top of his little paws. Making the bias tape um, put back my video release a bit. I wouldn't be able to release it for fall vacation, but I now had plenty and didn't have to worry about running out for like really ever. Yeah. If you've watched any Bob Ross, you know one of his famous catchphrases is the bravery test. Well, I think there's a bravery test in just about everything that a person makes or does. And this was mine. I hate slashing patterns. It's like applying grommets to a corset. It can potentially ruin the entire thing. And all your work up to that point is wasted. Now that the stressful part of the project was over, prior to the bias tape, I had uh, thought that black would make a nice contrast color for the waistband and the ties and back. So I started to prepare and press those and get those ready. And it wasn't until I started reviewing all this footage that I realized just how much pressing I did in the making of this apron. But pressing is better than basting in my book. All the steps for sewing this apron together seemed 
oddly out of order for me, but um, it all made sense in the end, so. As I often have trouble thinking outside the box and a lot of trouble visualizing what the finished garment's going to look like just from instructions, I often have to trust the process and just follow step by step when I'm following a pattern. There were, however, no specific pressing instructions, um, which sometimes you'll see, you know, pressing instructions in some of these earlier patterns, um, but uh, not in this one, so I just pressed it as I normally would. My last few projects required a lot of basting and I was done basting for a while so I was quite pleased that this project required only a few stitches of basting. If this apron turned out cute then I would probably wear it for more than just baking. But how about you? Do you have a collection of aprons? Do you have some that you only wear when you're doing gross chores and others that you wear in the kitchen? Or do you not own aprons at all and prefer to walk on the wild side and risk getting something all over your clothes? Tell me if you're a wild child down in the comments or if, like me, you have an apron for just about everything, then um, let me know by typing in the keyword fall baking down in the comments. With the last button applied, we were done. Here's Retro Mountain June modeling it for us now. I think it turned out pretty cute. But I know what you're thinking. June, can we see this thing in action? Well, as it happens, I wanted to bake some cookies. Ha ha! I said cookies, cookies, not that kind of action. No? It's an apron. But I feel ready for anything in this. Does it look like armor? What'd you think, you were defending Erebor against a dragon? You ruined all my fun, I swear. Just stab me now. Well, we're headed in the right direction anyway. Let's try again, shall we? Looks good. Looks better. And this is where we'll see our stereotypical 1950s housewife make cookies from scratch. Well, maybe not from scratch, as she does have a lot of video editing ahead of her. And she better get on it because she still has laundry to fold and dinner to make and cookies to bake. And here's our 1950s stereotypical housewife enjoying the fruits of her labors after a long and hard day of housework. Just kidding. Whenever I have a video push, my husband makes a round of tacos. Also, quick tip on how to get grease stains out of your aprons and really any clothing. Um, treat it with Dawn. And no, this is not a sponsored video. Um, it's just, you need a good degreaser, and if it was good enough to clean the duckies during oil spills, it's good enough to get the grease out of your, out of your clothing. So you just uh, put a little drop on the spot of grease stain, rub it gently together. Make sure to do this no more than 20 minutes before washing it. And then I like to line dry my aprons keep them looking fresh and new where possible. And I've got one more cookie then. Oh, we'll just put it over here. It'll share. But 
this only works if the grease stain hasn't been set, heat set by a dryer, um, if it hasn't been washed before. In which case, yeah, there is no hope of that grease stain really ever leaving because the, the dryer, that's why I only line dry mine, um, just in case I missed any spots, but uh, the, the heat of the dryer, not only does it wear down the fabrics, but it also heat sets stains in place, so there's no hope of getting rid of it at that point. Thanks for watching till the end. And if you like this video, then please give it a like. It really helps me out. And if you like this kind of content, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I upload at least twice a month. And I think that's all I have for you this week. So this is Mountain June saying bye now. And if you want to see more retro sewing, if not, my fantasy playlist only has one video on it, but watch it, please, for your own safety.